Hello everyone, it's Jin Teacher again from Reading Town. It's good to see you. Let's take a look at today's article. As you look in the picture, you can see that it's underwater. So let's see where and what it's about. It says underwater museum. So you know what a museum is. Museum is a large place that has many interesting things, sometimes about history, sometimes about technology that we can see and learn about. So we can see that it's underwater. So let's see where it's, where it's located. It says Europe's first underwater sculptor Museum, Museo Atlantico, was open to the public on January 10th. So let's look at that first sentence. So it's the first underwater sculpture museum. So sculpture is a piece of art, like a statue, uh, and that's what the museum is full of. But where is it? It's underwater, and it's Europe's first uh, underwater museum. And it's called Museo Atlantico, or if you translate it, it's Atlantic Museum. And it was open to the public. That means open to everyone. If it's private, then only certain people can come in. But public means anyone can come in. Uh, so it was open on January 10th, not too long ago. Uh, work on the project took nearly three years to complete under the direction of British sculptor Jason DeCares Taylor. So it took three years, almost three years, nearly three years to complete this project or this uh, piece that, they were, that they've been planning to do in the museum. And it was under the direction. So the, the British sculptor, the person who makes these statues named Jason DeCares Taylor, he was the one leading uh, this museum piece. Uh, it says his inaugural project of this kind in Granada the West Indies was named one of the top 25 wonders of the world by National Geographic magazine. So uh, it was one of the most uh, important or unique uh, sites in the world. That's why National Geographic magazine, they said that it's one of the 25 wonders of the world, meaning it's amazing things of the world. Uh, that we need to pay attention to. So it says his inaugural project, inaugural means his first, right? His opening project of this kind. So he never has done a project quite like this. So to make a museum underwater, it's the first of its kind and it was in Granada, which is located in the West Indies. So that's in the Atlantic Ocean, it's the islands. Uh, the facility is located on Lanzarote Island in Spain's Canary Islands. So it's located in the Canary Islands, which belong to Spain, but it's not quite in uh, the area where Spain is located. It's located in the Atlantic Ocean, kind of below uh, where America is, around the Florida areas where there's a lot of islands. Visitors can arrange tours through certified diving companies. So uh, people who want to go and visit, they can set up a tour, they can set up uh, the view to go uh, into this museum through certified diving companies. Certified means they have a license, they're professional, they're trusted, uh, and it's a diving company. Taylor said the work aims to mark 2017 as a pivotal moment in a line, a line in the sand and reminder that our world's oceans and climates are changing and we need to take action, urgent action, before it's too late. So the work aims means it, it hopes to, to mark 2017 as a pivotal moment. Pivotal moment means very important moment. Uh, it's, a, it's a moment where things can go this way or that way. So it's pivotal, right? It can be changing. Uh, a line in the sand, a line in the sand, if you go to the beach and you draw a line in the sand, then you can mark, right? This side or that side. So it's saying it's a very important time where we decide in the year 2017, what are we going to do? And it's a line in the sand and reminder that our world's oceans and climate are changing. So climate is like the weather, the temperatures. Is it getting warmer, colder? So it's showing this piece, this museum, underwater museum is showing that uh, the world is changing quickly. The weather, the pollution, all these things, global warming, it's changing and this project hopes to uh, make people realize that they need to take urgent action. Urgent means they need to do it quickly. They need to take fast action before it's too late. Before it's too late for what? Before the ocean gets too damaged, before the fish die, before the coral and the reef, the hard areas like uh, rocky kind of substances where the, where the fish live, those are coral and the reef, we'll talk about it later. So when the water gets too warm, the coral and the reef, they start breaking and the fish have no homes. And because of that, uh, artists like um, 
Jason DeCares Taylor are saying that we need to bring attention to the ocean so that more and more people will be aware and that we can do something about it. Urgent action before it's too late. It says this project was designed, was designed to provoke global awareness of environmental conservation and marine ecology issues. So this project, the underwater museum, it was designed or was created to provoke or make provoke Global awareness, global means all across the world, right? Global awareness, making people know about, about it all around the world, about in, environmental conservation. Conservation means saving, right? You're protecting. So saving the environment and protecting the environment as well as, mar uh, as, well as marine ecology issues. So issues or problems dealing with marine, marine or underwater, and ecology is like nature. So the biology, the living things, the nature of underwater problems, that's what people uh, need to know about as well as saving the environment, right? Conserving or conservation of the environment. So this project, that was the goal, right? To raise awareness. Uh, it says here, spread over an area of 2,500 square meters, the museum has 12 art installations and more than 300 life-size human figures. So I don't know if you can tell in that picture, but this, uh, this site, this project has 12 art installations, meaning that there's 12 different sections of art that are put in or installed. Install means to put in. And more than 300 life-size human figures. Life-size means it's the same as real life, the same size, and there are over 300 people kind of statues. So as you can see in that picture, there's some statues and those aren't real people, those are statues. So there's over 300 of those in uh, the museum uh, site. So it says here, the sculptor's site said that over time, his sculptures will change colors and get covered with coral and biological growth, eventually serving as a habitat for new organisms as artificial reefs. So like I said, coral is the hard rocky part uh, that you can find underwater and a large group of those coral is called the reef and that's where the fish swim and live and hide under right so the sculptor site so the place where the sculptor uh, his name is Jason DeCare uh, Jason DeCare's Taylor where he put all of his statues that could be a place over time as time passes uh, it'll change colors. So the life-size human sculptures, they will change colors over time because it's underwater and they will get covered with coral, the hard rocky substance, and biological growth. Biological means natural and living. And there's things that are gonna be uh, growing on the statues, right? So we can see a little bit of uh, plant-like substance or right, living fish, small like substance growing on the statues. And eventually they will serve or they will help or become a habitat, habitat meaning a home, a place where these fish or new organisms, living things, can live, right? So over time, these statues, they're not just going to be there for us to look at, but they can turn into a uh, part of the environment in the ocean where fish can live and new organisms can live as artificial reefs. Artificial means not real, right? It means made or man-made, okay? So artificial reefs. The largest piece in the museum crossing the Rubicon is a 30 meter long barrier towards a gateway. So a gateway is kind of like an opening uh, to another place. It's like, a, like an arch. So in America, we have the gateway arch. So gateway is an opening to a new place. And the largest piece, so there's 12 art installations and the largest of those 12 sites that he has made in this underwater museum, it's called Crossing the Rubicon, right? And it's a very large barrier toward a gateway. So it's uh, connection, so I think that's the piece of it that you can see in the picture. It looks like a long barrier, like a block, and it's opening up to another uh, opening, another gateway. So it's a very interesting ar uh, article. So we know that in the world there's been a lot of environmental issues, that people have been saying that the air is bad, the water is bad, and also the temperature change, the climate change that's also affecting the ocean. And this artist uh, from uh, the British sculptor, Jason DeCares Taylor, he said, he thought, why don't we do something different so that more and more people will become interested in the issues or the problems that deal with saving our ocean. And I think he would be very successful. So if you have uh, a vacation, a family vacation, this is another place that you guys can go see for yourselves. Uh, let's take a look at the, the next part of the article. And this is one of the life-size human statues. So it looks like a man, uh, life-size, about probably my size. And he is on a swing, but 
that's under the ocean in the Atlantic Ocean. So we know that that's part of his, uh, his museum piece. So it says, what is the name of Europe's first underwater sculpture museum? So we said uh, it translates into Atlantic Museum and that in Spanish is Museo Atlantico, right? Atlantico. And that means Atlantic Museum. Uh, when did the museum open? We said that it wasn't too long ago. The museum first opened on January 10th. And the last question, what is the largest piece in the museum? So we said that it has a name and it was at the end of the article. The name of the largest piece is crossing the Rubicon, right? So Rubicon is an area and crossing that area uh, is the name of uh, the largest piece in the underwater museum. Let's take a look at the final part of our comprehension for this article. It says the facility is blank on Lanzarote Island in Spain's Canary Island. So what about it? What is it? Uh, it's where it is. And the word that tells us where it is, is called located, right? So we know that location is telling us where something is. Located is uh, where we can find it. So uh, the facility, right? The, the area or the, the site is located. You can find it on Lanzarote Island in Spain's Canary Islands. This project was designed to provoke. Remember, we said provoke means create or make global something of environmental conservation and marine ecology issues. So environmental means the environment, dealing with the environment, about the environment. Conservation is saving. So it's about uh, issues about saving the environment and marine ecology issues, problems with underwater uh, life, right? So provoke global what? Provoke global, you want people to know about it. So provoke global awareness, okay? And the last part, it says spread over an area of 2,500 square meters. The blank has 12 art installations and more than 300 life-size human figures. So we said that uh, the art museum, the installations, the pieces that have been put underwater, there are more than 12 sites, there are 12 blocks and more than 300 life-size human figures. So the what has? 12 art installations. I think I might have said it over and over again. The museum has 12 art installations and more than 300 life-size human figures. So we saw in the picture that if you go and look at the museum, which is located underwater in the Atlantic Ocean, you can see a lot of human-like pieces. So I've seen some pictures of it. There's people uh, looking, there, it looks like a statue swimming. There's kind of some uh, interesting pieces where there's a man with his head in the sand, right? And it's kind of uh, strange if you look at it, but then you know that those are all sculptures that you can find underwater. And over time, the good thing is, it's not just gonna be uh, an old piece of metal or art that's underwater just taking up space, but over time, it's going to become homes and many of the living organisms under the ocean. So uh, this article was telling us about a new and interesting, a different way that people are trying to raise awareness or raise people's understanding of the issues such as global warming and how it affects the fish and the living things in the ocean. So this artist uh, thought of a new idea. Maybe you can think of a new idea to raise awareness of the problems that affect people in the world today. I hope you enjoyed today's article and I hope you share this with your friends and maybe one day get to visit the Underwater Museum. Okay, until next time, I hope you do well and I'll see you again. Goodbye everyone.